Hello and welcome to this very special conversation, Talking Big. I couldn't be more thrilled for what I'm about to do. I'm talking to two of the biggest sports stars in the world. They're joining me right now. The greatest quarterback of all time, Tom Brady, and the greatest ever F1 racing driver of all time, Lewis Hamilton, and they're both here. How are you, gentlemen? It's such a pleasure to welcome you both. Thank you for being here. Thanks, James. Lewis, love seeing you, obviously. Yeah, great to see you. Have your paths crossed with each other before? Yeah, Tom and I, we've met multiple times and been in touch for some years now. Sometimes I, I message him, uh, trying to like secretly get a bit of advice. Well, this is great. This is fantastic. Now, look, you, you, you have so much in common, yet your, your sports are completely different. What similarities do you think you two share outside of being, frankly, for my liking, too good looking to be athletes? Like, Lewis, when you look at what Tom does, do you see any similarities? I do. I mean, I, I watch really closely what uh, Tom has achieved. Some of the things that, that Tom does in his training, how he pre prepares himself, how he um, conducts himself with his team. There are so many things that you can take from watching uh, a great athlete like Tom that you can then apply it to being a better athlete yourself. And, uh, Tom, do you look at other athletes like Lewis? Do, is it inspiring? Do you see any similarities in his dedication as an athlete? Yeah, I mean, Lewis was, from the time he was a teenager, you know, one of the real prodigies of the sport. And Lewis you know, already trained this morning for, I don't know, 10, 12 hours, something like that. <laughs> How many other people are doing that? You know, that's why he's the greatest Formula One champion of all time. Just hearing you say that, Tom, made me think about that. And, and, I, and I hope I'm getting this right. Lewis, when you had won, I think you won a go-kart tournament. And I think you were, I think you were certainly under the age of 12 or 13. And you went up to Ron Dennis, who I think was running the McLaren team at that point, And you said, hi, I'm Lewis Hamilton. And I'm going to race for you one day. And then, Tom, am I right in thinking that when you first signed your professional contract, you said to the owner of that team, I'm going to be the best decision you ever made. Is that true? I had said that to the boss of my team, and he tells the story a little different because I said, you'll never regret picking me. Now, I think he doesn't quite remember the same way, but that's how I remember it. But I guess the point is there was a confidence, you know, that you got to have in you. Obviously, I always tell my teammates this. You have to believe in yourself before anyone else believes in you. Because when you get around your teammates, they're going to look in your eyes. And those eyes are going to tell them a story. And if you look like you have confidence and belief in yourself, they're going to believe in you and they're going to believe in themselves. So that's the point is I think for me, I had a young age, I thought, okay, I know I can do this. You know, I had a lot of training and I was prepared and I knew when I got my opportunity, I was going to take advantage. So uh, I was very fortunate to get the opportunity you know shortly thereafter i don't know how it's been for you tom but for, in my life absolutely everything that's happened i've it's been something i visualized or or dreamt of and i was you know i just gave everything to get to those those places of course with a lot of help from great people around me i had a vision and that belief in myself which enabled me to get it and i of course going back 10 15 years you could have never imagined that those things would really come true and uh to the boss 10 years later he he gave me a deal and i won the world championship for him 10 years later so um it's crazy to hear that's something similar to tom so much of both of your sports are about the significance of perfect timing tom talk to me about the significance of perfect timing in a in a football game and i think when the timing and is on your side and the rhythm's right you got to stay there and you gotta find ways to maintain that. And that's hard to do because there's a lot of external forces coming at you because usually you have an opponent who's trying to do the same thing. When you're out of rhythm and your timing's off, a lot of people still just charge at the same tempo. And I always think that's a good opportunity to actually slow things down. And hey, where are we at? How do we reevaluate this? You know, you get into a game and you know the first half of the game doesn't go the way you want. Well, you gotta change the rhythm, change it. And then once you get it, then you just, you keep it. When I'm watching the, the game, Tom, what you're, how you're finding someone and then, then phew, split second decision you take. It's very, very similar, I guess, uh, and I guess I can relate in the split second decisions I have to take uh, in the races. And it is, it is about getting into that rhythm. I know both of you have a, have a shared love of watches. Lewis, what is it about watches that you, that you love so much? 
I've always been into kind of mechanics. I start as a kid, I was always uh, taking things apart and rebuilding them. When you look at one of these watches and there's 500 pieces all put together by one person, the craftsmanship, I think, for me is fascinating. Plus, you know, the, 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 the pieces obviously are tiny. I remember getting my first watch. It was from Argos in, uh, in, <laughs> <laughs> in England. And the, and the watch was like six pounds. And that, I remember saving up for that watch. And it was my, you know, I went to school and I felt really proud. I used to wear it outside my, um, my blazer. And I thought that it elevated me. What about you, Tom? When, when did you first discover your, your love of of watches and, and what they represent? Certainly for men, there's not a lot of jewelry that we typically wear and it does, Lewis said it perfect, it elevates your look. And um, in college, you know, as I was gonna become a professional, I had this on my screensaver, this was on a really old computer and the screensaver was a watch and it was the IWC, uh, you know, GST automatic alarm from like the late 90s and it has a screensaver and I ever thought, if I ever make a few bucks, this would be the watch. Um, you know, that I would want. And um, I ended up buying my first watch at a Tourneau store in uh, 57th Street in New York. And just went in there at a random time and bought a watch that I still have, it's this beautiful IWC that I still have. Really, what, you've, what the two of you have both achieved in the past 12 months within your sport, I think, really separates being great and being the greatest of all time. Like, it, it suddenly it wasn't a debate, it's a fact. What is it that propels you on to just keep going and keep breaking records that you already set? First of all, I think it's a real love for what, you're, what I'm doing. You know, this isn't like a, a job. It's really a true love, and I fell in love with what I was doing a long time ago. So people from the outside would think, well, what else, what do you want to do? Well, I still... Yeah, I don't know. You love what you're doing. Lewis loves what he's doing. Like, why take away one of the great loves of your life just arbitrarily to go do other things when, um, when maybe not the timing is right? I think the love of what I'm doing and then the willingness to continue to learn and to improve is what is really the most enjoyable. Ultimately, I was always trying to be my best, not the best. I always got satisfaction knowing that I prepared as hard as I could I gave you know, so much emotionally to what I was doing. I gave so much to my teammates. I gave everything I had, and that's the most satisfying. So even if you don't get the outcome you want, you're still in a way satisfied, although you're probably not um, you know, happy, but there's a satisfaction knowing that you gave your very best. What about you, Lewis? What, what, what keeps you going? Do you have a goal set in mind that you think, well, I'm gonna achieve that and then I'll reevaluate it? Probably when I was younger, subconsciously, there were certain, there were goals. The first step was just getting to Formula One, and then the next was, okay, I'm here, I'd love to get there, and then, you know, I reached that point, and then it's what was next. And that early journey is kind of, it's about your mission, and then um, very, very much kind of your soul kind of goal. But then when you get, for me, when I've got further along, realize I'm a part of a huge team of over a thousand people, how can you elevate? How can you lift other people? And it's a strange process going from being young in your teens where it's all about your success to then seeing it being about a, a larger group. Let's talk about superstitions, okay? I've, I, I've never met an athlete or a sports star who doesn't have some. Talk to me about your superstitions. Do you have any rituals that you do before a game or before a race that, that you feel bring you luck? Tom, do you have anything? This is the first day you've met someone that doesn't have superstitions, so. I don't believe you. I don't it's believe over. you. It's over. Really? There's, none. There's nothing. I really, um, Same here. No. I'm not superstitious at all. You don't lace your shoes in a certain way. You don't do one glove on, next glove, nothing. Hey, if that's the reason why we're gonna, we're gonna lose and we are screwed because, you know, this leg, this pant first and this color and this, you know, wear this, you know, thing. Tom, and, did, you, did, did you ever have it? Did you ever have superstition? I didn't. So I did when I was when I was younger. I like, I think I must have been I must have been ten or eleven, and I my brother gave me this um, luck, a conker, and it was my lucky conker. So I had I put it in my suit, and I I don't know what happened to the damn thing. It came out my leg, trouser leg or something. I lost this conker, and then I had a lucky pair of underwear. My mum shrunk them. It actually <laughs> it didn't, it didn't get till I was I was seventeen or eighteen. 
And I had a sequence of how to get, so I was getting dressed, right sock first, left sock, all this, these steps that I'd taken. I remember I got in the car, I was in Germany, and I'm about to start the race and my helmet wasn't done up. So I've missed one of those elements of this, this, these steps that I had made crucial to getting the job done. And I remember I crashed, you know, several, several seconds later. And um, after that, I was like, this is ridiculous. This is all in my head. And I, basically I got rid of that. And now I, like Tom, I don't have any of those things. I think we create, we probably create those things in our minds. And y you'll know from Tom's, what Tom was saying, you know, psych the psychological challenges that we face. You've got to free your mind and let, let the, um, the greatness flow, I guess, you know? It's interesting because um, some days you're really up. You know, you walk into the stadium three hours before the game like the Super Bowl, there's more energy, you're more amped up, right? So what do I gotta do? I gotta bring myself down to a good place, you know, so I can really uh, be where I need to be mentally. Some days I walk in, I'm tired. Man, it's a one o'clock game and, you know, you just maybe had a Monday night game, so didn't quite get, the, and then how do you get yourself up? Oh, I put some music on. So a lot of it is those, you know, there's those instinctual things too that I never wanna be so fixed and rigid that, oh, I have to do, this, maybe I need something different on that particular day because life is not robotic. Now when I'm watching like a one o'clock game and I put it on TV, I'm gonna be like, ah, oh, Tom's tired. <laughs> He's probably listening to some show tunes right now just to really pump himself up. He's got the Hairspray soundtrack on, he's going for it. Uh, now, both of you have hit some, some, some major milestones. Tom, yes or no answer, seven rings. Greatest of all time. Are we going for are we going for number eight? Yes. Lewis, seven world championship titles, equaling the best of all time, as well as the most race wins ever. Over a mammoth season, are we going for number eight? I've got a follow of Tom, yes. <laughs> this is great. How do you think either of you would fare in each other's sport? I always thought I was a pretty good driver. I was sudden in the mail this week. I got the most beautiful gift. And you know what I realized? It doesn't fit. <laughs> so how can I be a driver? <laughs> how can I be a driver when the helmets don't fit me? <laughs> well, that, that is a, that's a hell of a gift. So hang on, Tom, are you gonna replay this? Are you gonna send Lewis an NFL helmet? I'm gonna send him one of mine. And I'm gonna see how he likes it. <laughs> but I think we could get Lewis in there for a few plays. I think he, he, I've seen his athletic ability. He's pretty talented in a lot of areas. I think he could do some things on the football field. I would run the opposite way. Seeing those, those, <laughs> those guys, the, the, the size that they are, no, I don't know if I could do it. No, I actually think, Lewis, you'd be, you'd be good making those runs because you're so good at anticipating danger. I've got short legs. I'm, you know, I'm... You know, the RPM of my legs are gonna have to be super high. I just... <laughs> now, I wanted to play a quick game of true or false, okay? We're gonna pit you against each other, okay? You both know how to dominate your respective sports. Now we're gonna find out how well you two know each other. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put do I need 60 to put my seconds game face on, on the clock. Yeah, you need your game face. This is it, this is serious. This is the biggest tournament either of you will ever be part of, okay? So we're gonna put 60 seconds on the clock and we're gonna have a knowledge test with a simple true or false, okay? Tom, you're gonna to go first. These questions are all about Lewis Hamilton. And your time starts now. Lewis can lose around eight pounds of weight during a single race. True. It is true, he lost as much as 10. That's, that's my new diet. Uh, okay, true or false? Hey, good Lewis, my time. I'll add three seconds. Lewis has won 90 races during his career. True or false? False, way more than that. 95, correct. True or false? Lewis eats an entirely plant-based diet. True or false? We got true. True, true or false? Lewis featured on the Christina Aguilera song, Not Myself Tonight. False. It was false, it was pipe under the pseudonym XNDA. Okay, true or false? Lewis has a cameo in, cameo in the Pixar movie Cars 2. True. Boom! True is correct. Okay, quickly, we're running out of time. Lewis is just 13 years old when he got his first Formula One contract. True. True is at 
absolutely right. Look at that. He got six questions right. So, Lewis, your best chance here is to tie with Tom Brady. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure on your shoulders now. That's amazing. Okay. The best you could do is tie. Let's keep that in mind. If you do your best, all you could do is tie. He's that me was out. some. He really was. He was really getting in your mind there. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Questions for Lewis. Lewis, here we go. 60 seconds on the clock, please. These questions are all about Tom Brady. True or false? Tom Brady has never had a cup of coffee. True. It is true. Tom, you should try it. It's so good. Okay, question two. Tom threw for 2,217 yards and 16 touchdowns his senior year playing for the Ohio State Bucks. False. False, you're right. He played for the Michigan, Wol Michigan Wolverines. True or false? Tom was the 89th pick in the 2000 NFL draft. False. He was 199th. Uh, true or false? Tom drinks a minimum of 112 ounces of water a day. That's 14 glasses. True or false? Uh, I'm going to say true. True is right. Professional baseball team, the Montreal Expos, wanted to sign Tom in 95 before he turned them down. True or false? True. OK, quick. Tom Brady made a cameo in the HBO series Entourage. True or false? True. And it's true. Look at that. An incredible draw. There is greatness in both of you. Look at this. Seven championships, seven Formula One championships, and now you've drawn in this as well. Uh, I cannot tell you, Tom and Lewis, any time I've been around either of you, it is always a thrill to be in your orbit. But to, to get this moment to talk to you both together is an absolute thrill for me. It really, really is. Congratulations on everything you have achieved in your sports and everything that you're going to carry on doing. We know the debate will rage on about who is the greatest sprinter, basketball star, tennis player, but there is no question that you two belong amongst the sporting greatest of all times. Thank you for joining me today for an inspiring and brilliant conversation. Tom Brady, thank you so much. Lewis Hamilton, thank you so much. Best of luck for the future, fellas. All my love. Thanks, James. Bye, Lewis. Great to see you, Tom. <laughs>